For tapes of end-time meetings, deliverance services, or Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, writes Post Office Box 21516, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas, zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. Friday morning, September Day weekend, teaching and deliverance camp meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. This is 1A of the Friday morning teaching session with Reverend Jack Harris of Beckville, Texas. I'm glad for the praise and worship and the wonderful presence of the Lord. But then with that, there must be teaching. So, Lord... According to the Word, and we can praise and worship and magnify the Lord, but unless we have the Word of the Lord in us and know it is written, we can walk astray and, and be contrary to the will of God, even though our praise and worship is acceptable unto Him. And it's necessary that we have a teaching of the Word, that we hide the Word in our heart, that we know that it is written, and then we walk that line according to that Word and that we walk it with wisdom, and we're able to apply it to our lives. And then we can say to Satan, In Jesus' name, it is written, You have no part in me. And then we can, we can walk in that assurance, and that deliverance will come and be our portion as we seek and walk according to the word of the Lord. This morning I've asked Brother Jack Harris to, to come and teach us some of the precepts and things of the kingdom, so that we, knew, so that we have an idea and know in what direction we're going and wherein we're, we may walk according to the word of the Lord, that we may know what it says and rightly divide it, that we can apply it to our everyday life. So it's my privilege to have Brother Jack Harris come and teach us this morning from the word of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Greetings. Greetings. <laughs> Thank the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. We certainly have enjoyed our stay this far. It, uh, we enjoyed the ministry of our brother McFadden last night, and uh, we enjoyed the beautiful fellowship with all of his people here. Praise the Lord. Uh, in uh, Second Chronicles chapter 15, I'd like to read a verse to a scripture here, and I might make a few comments, and uh, then I'll give you a title for my teaching, and uh, then I'm liable to do anything. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Federal reason. I I was at the convention a while back, and uh, I was teaching the morning services, and somebody was preaching the night, and uh, the lady asked me, said, I noticed that uh, when they introduce you, they say you're going to teach. And when they introduce the other brother, they say he's going to preach. She said, well, what is the difference in your preaching and teaching? And they said, well, when I preach, I am rough on the furniture, and I spit on the first three pews. <laughs> and when I teach, I, <laughs> I use a little bit more restraint. <laughs> well, I don't know if that's really true or not. <laughs> Uh, I really don't know. There's very little difference, really, in my teaching and preaching. Uh, there is some difference, however. I'll be teaching this morning. I may preach some. All right. Uh, in the 15th chapter of Second Chronicles, verse 3, um, uh, through about, oh, verse 7, I guess, uh, we find some, uh, an interesting statement here uh, that is, uh, will be informative to us. It says, Now for a long season Israel hath been preached, and you can underline teaching priest, and without law. Uh, you might underline just all of that. It's worthy of being marked in your book. And when they were in trouble, did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found of them. Now in those times, that is, in the times when they had no teaching priest and were without the law, <clears throat> there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in. But great vexations were upon all the inhabitants of the country. A nation was destroyed of nation, 
and city of city, for God did vex them with all adversity. Be strong, therefore, and let your hands, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. Hallelujah. I, I just read that to, uh, to say this that uh, the reward by works. We're saved by grace. That's not by works, lest any man should boast. But the, but the the um, the plateau of our experiences comes through <coughs> works. Of course, you have to have faith with the works. But but they all right. <coughs> well, now then, when there was no teaching priest, uh, they were without law. Now that doesn't mean that Israel didn't have any. Well, they had a, they had the right amount of priests uh, in number. <clears throat> but they were not teaching priests. I, <clears throat> I would entitle this message this morning, We Have a Teaching Priest. All right? Now, they, um, I came through the, up through the old order, the old Pentecostal order, of, uh, as old as you can get uh, in the Pentecostal order. I came up through all the legalistic, um, all the codes of dress, the whole bit. Uh, I, uh, I, that's what I was schooled in to begin with. I don't know that I ever believed all of that. I, uh, when I went into the ministry, I never, I never preached, uh, uh, I never preached legalism. Uh, I never preached a code. Uh, I, I began to teach from the Word. Uh, and I simply could not find a lot of the things that we did. I uh, couldn't find any justification for it. A lot of the things we believed, I, I couldn't find that they were really justified. Uh, so, the, but it was a, it was I was not a rebel, but I, you know, I was taught submission. I submitted, but uh, uh, but the Lord was speaking to me, sure. and the Lord was was leading me out. Uh, he was going to take away the old, he could give us some new. Praise the Lord. I'm not too much on formula. I was with my uh, uh, good friend, Bill, Brother Bill Smith from Fort Worth, uh, one time here in the past. And if you know Brother Bill, he, when he prays for the sick, he almost raised the dead with just his voice. Uh, <laughs> everything he does, he does it uh, with all of his might. And uh, as you've already noticed, I have quite a bit of volume myself. I, uh, I, uh, a fellow asked one of my boys one time, I, we raised four boys and one daughter, and uh, of course they're all grown now, and uh, asked my oldest boy, I said, your dad ever uh, whoop you much when you're his boy? I said, no, I said, dad's <coughs> voice will cause a line. Well, <coughs> Uh, anyhow, that uh, we were there was another gentleman preacher there that was you know this, uh, I, I do not say this in any derogatory sense at all. I I agree, or, or I mean he might be right in some cases, but in uh, it's kind of comical anyhow. He so he in order to correct Brother Smith, I guess, and probably me too. He uh, <laughs> he said in his message somewhere he, he he managed to get in the fact that if the authority you don't have to scream. <laughs> well, I, you like I say, I agree. I agree with that. Uh, that works some, but but the <laughs> but the next day we went out in the country to visit a fellow and it wasn't. We, it wasn't anybody home, but we didn't know at the time, so we was going up the house, and, this, and there was a little fast dog came running out just like he was going to eat us all three up. And, uh, and so that preacher said, you know, he, come on now, Fido, and be a good pooch. And man, the more he good at him and, you know, and talked softly to him, and, and he just kept coming. He's nearly about to break his leg. And I stomped my foot and said, Get out of that house, dog! And, and he tucked his tail and run under that house. <laughs> 
Now, I said to the preacher, I said, well, you had the authority, but I got his attention. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> So, so even though you have the authority, sometimes you have to get their attention. Uh, hallelujah. So, whether you speak softly or uh, whatever, <laughs> hallelujah. Amen. The, there's a time to all things, I believe the book says. Did I tell you about being night, driving all night with this preacher friend of mine, and we had our radio set on Bill Rio. <laughs> uh, um, one after another, they came. Thirty-minute sessions, the, the, the preachers. And each one of them uh, was, you know, the, the, according to him, he's about the only one. And uh, he had the truth, and the rest of them just found in the air, or so to speak. <laughs> uh, and um, finally, after we'd listened to several of them, you know, and we'd made uh, some brief comments along, and finally this one comes on way on over in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, and he says, I'm, uh, I'm going to preach to you 30 minutes out of the Bible. And, uh, and then he gave his name and address 26 times <laughs> the next 24 minutes, and had the announcer to give it one more time after that. And in that 24 minutes, he, he never quoted one scripture. He never made reference to one. <laughs> and, and, and when he quit, uh, finally this friend of mine says, well, tell me what did he do? And I said, well, he's the only one that done what he said he was going to do. He said, what? I said, well, his opening statement was, I'm going to preach out the Bible, and he sure never did get in it. Now, <laughs> now I said that <laughs> to say to you that I'll be preaching in it. Because, <laughs> you know, when you preach sonship, the kingdom of God, you, you know, it's kind of, there's some, it's some controversial. You become somewhat controversial. So, there is, uh, uh, let me just say, and uh, you watch me, and I won't get far from the Scripture. Uh, and for the reason that I believe what I believe. And you can't go beyond this. If you try to go beyond this, <laughs> well, you're standing on your own. You have to stay in this, in this Word. Uh, and so, I just would like to remind us of that uh, this morning. Now... Uh, I let me see. There are in the, the kingdom of God. If we preach on the kingdom of God, and uh, the, there are in the New Testament there are thirty-one parables. Uh, I could be give or take one. Uh, then they, there are six parables that tell us we are receiving the kingdom into us. Well, I'm not going to list the whole 31 and tell you what they are telling us, but there are six parables that tells us we are receiving the kingdom into us. There are six more parables uh, that tell us that we are entering into the kingdom. Hallelujah. Then there, are, then there are five parables that tells us that we can lose the kingdom. Then there are many just New Testament proverbs, that is, statements concerning the principles of the kingdom. So, so the kingdom of God is not a new message, not by any means. As a matter of fact, Jesus came teaching the kingdom of God. And in the fourth chapter of St. Matthew, and verse um, 17, he makes this statement that um, uh, from that time Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now this is a very brief statement. But it tells us three things emphatically. Number one, it tells us the way into the kingdom is through repentance. You can never come into the kingdom of God until you learn how to repent. Shall I tell you what, uh, how repentance comes about? Uh, through godly sorrow. Godly sorrow worketh repentance, not to be repented of. There are lots of repentance uh, that is not, uh, not motivated by godly sorrow. 
Some of it's just motivated by getting caught. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, if you're just sorry that you got caught up with, that's, that's not repentance. It's not godly sorrow. It's not a godly sorrow. That's a worldly sorrow, and it worketh death. Uh, but godly sorrow worketh repentance not to be repented of. And you have to be a good repenter. Somebody said, well, I repented when I got saved. Well, I did too. But I've done a whole heap more repenting since then <laughs> than I did then. And unless I can ma maintain a spirit of repentance, I, I will not uh, reach high in the kingdom of God. I will you. Of course, when you speak of repentance, we go back to the evangelistic days, and people think that you're talking about getting saved. I, I, I think that I will just uh, go with the foregone conclusion that you're already saved this morning, and, and uh, we'll get that out of the way. What I say is not... Uh, and is not uh, in connection or in conjunction with whether you um, meet God in peace or, or, or in torment. We settle that uh, to start with. That uh, if you are, but I say that you will have to be a good repenter. Of course, uh, those, uh, one lady got indignant where I was uh, saying this and said, well, I'm not going to repent because I hadn't done anything to repent about. And I hadn't done anything. And I said, well, you ought to repent because you hadn't done nothing. Praise the Lord. Now, uh, if you... Uh, <laughs> hallelujah. Brilliant. Well, if you teach um, sonship, what I see missing today in, the, uh, in my travels and at home and, and everywhere in the body of Christ is, uh, is a, a need for stronger ministry. Ministry that will will take authority, and for submission then of the people, you see, to the min you can't get into, and uh, the ministry is going to have to uh, we're going to have to take authority that we we really'd rather not have that responsibility, but in any uh, form of government anywhere, people have to take the responsibility, uh, and there has to be great authority executed. And the kingdom of God uh, is um, first the natural and then the spiritual. In the, uh, in the uh, tenth chapter of um, Revelations, chapter 7, <coughs> says that when the seventh angel shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished. When the seventh angel begins to sound, the mystery of God should be finished. And then you turn over to the eleventh chapter, and the fifth angel sounded. And there's a voice from heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ. Well, we know who our Lord is. It's the Lord Jesus. And the Christ is the Lord Jesus and His body, His many-member body. It has pleased God to bring many sons to glory. Hallelujah. And from the beginning of and began, God had already purposed that He would bring many sons to glory. Hallelujah. So, so He never has diverted uh, from His plan. Now, the only thing that we can do here is position ourselves. If we position ourselves right in the economy of God, then we will have a right um, um, uh, success. I was going to say we'd have a right ending, but I'm not looking for an ending. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, now, am I looking for a beginning? For it already has begun. And of the increase of His government and peace, there shall be no end. Now, I'd like to be out there somewhere. I expect to be out there somewhere. I do not hesitate to tell you that my, my blessed hope is that I will walk into life. <clears throat> Come to Zion. He'll take one of a city and two of a family and bring them to Zion. It is an exclusive uh, group uh, that makes the first fruits company. But oh, there's a great harvest just beyond the first fruits. Hallelujah. 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 
Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, well, the, um, the Paul says in uh, Romans 8, There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. Do mind the things of the flesh. They that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. For the carnal mind is enmity against God. It is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh can please God. But you are not in the flesh, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. And if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, that same Spirit that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit which dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we're debtors, not to the flesh. If you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. And as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And we have not received the a spirit of bondage again unto corruption, but we have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, and the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if we are children, we are heirs, heirs to God, and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. If so be that we suffer with him, we shall also be glorified together. Ah, for I, oh, blessed be God forever. Hallelujah. Mm. The Apostle Paul walked into his study one day and just looking around, he, he looked under the ledger of sufferings. He pulled the ledger and shipwrecked three times, floated on a board two weeks in the deep, beat three times with 40 stripes less one, persecuted by my countrymen, left for dead, stoned to death, left for dead. Then he, he happened to glance over uh, to another cabinet entitled Glory, the Glory. Uh, and he reached and pulled a ledger and glanced at it, and he said, Time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. Hallelujah! 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 Oh, when I compare the sufferings against the glory, there is no comparison. Uh, if we suffer with Him, we will also be glorified together. Hallelujah. Ah, uh, yes. I guess, well, the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. Here we come now. We're getting down to... To the nitty gritty. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who subjected the same in hope. Hallelujah. And that's my blessed hope. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, yes. He was made subject to vanity, not willingly, it wasn't by his own will, but by him that subjected the same in hope. For the creature itself shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the sons of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now, and not only they, but we ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, do groan within ourselves, awaiting the adoption to it, the redemption of our bodies. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. For we are saved by hope. 
Hope that is seen is not hope. What man yet hopeth for that which he has? But if you hope for that which you have not, then do you with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit helpeth our infirmities, for we know not how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us uh, with groanings that cannot be uttered. For he that searcheth my heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he did also predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Ah, for if he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not also with him freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It's Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, and is even now seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. Ah. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation, or depil, or sword? As it is written, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all of these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's sonship. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be God. We are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. The apostle likens us to, they kept the sheep fastened back in the big pens, and, and as they slaughtered them for market, they, they bring them to the smaller pens, and then they have the last holding pen with the trap door. And, and the sheep in there, when they get ready for another one, they'll just spring the trap in a shear. We're, we're telling it as sheep for the slaughter. When he demands another sacrifice, I will have fought a good fight. I will help finish my course. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 That's, that door will spring open and I'll step through. Hallelujah. Ah, yes. Yeah. When you hear, Timothy, when you hear it vehemently, I have been offered. Hallelujah. There is a difference. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ah, yes. Bless the Lord, O oh, my soul. All right. Now, let's turn over to, I've just kind of uh, given us a little background on uh, scriptures here. Let's turn over to the fourth chapter of Ephesians. And we'll read, let's begin with the seventh verse. We'll read to about uh, 16. Well, maybe we'll read. We'll just read. We'll start with seven anyhow. We might not read for it. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith... When he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descends of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of man, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ, 
from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Now, let me say, let's back up to the seventh and uh, to the eighth verse, and we'll read here. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he's talking about Jesus ascending up on high to the right hand of the Father. When he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now, now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? I will be commenting on this and expounding it uh, before the morning is over. Uh, and uh, but first, let me say uh, that when the apostle Paul writes this, he's writing about the most important event that has ever taken place in the history of the world. The ascension of our blessed Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody says life of Calvary was, uh, was the greatest event. No, uh, had, 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 there not, had this ascension not took place, Calvary would have meant nothing. Everything beyond the ascension would have meant nothing, except that the ascension takes place. It is the most important event that ever took place. Have you, uh, have you ever, I know that you have, uh, the, and you want to back it up, and you go backing it up, it's kind of comical, you know, to see uh, everything running backwards. Well, if he doesn't ascend, you're going to have to run the reel backwards. Hallelujah. Amen. Going to have to run it backwards, and somehow or another, uh, that, that those lambs, those 600,000 lambs uh, that was killed in Egypt uh, on that night, uh, and the blood was placed over the door, so somehow or another, this will have to be undone. You have to run it back even past that. Unless he ascends up on high, unless he defeats death, unless he defeats hell and the grave, hallelujah, everything else will be meaningless. So Paul is writing of the greatest event that has ever took place uh, in the history of time. Uh, anywhere, on any continent, it is the greatest event ever. And he says, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive. I'll, I'll show you how he done that. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. And it can happen. Uh, it's going to happen to us. Then he led captivity captive, and he gave gifts to men. It is these gifts that he gave to men uh, that is our hope. Well, Paul says, you have been made to sit together in heavenly places with him. That is our, um, that is our positional um, uh, uh, place um, in the, uh, that's where we, <laughs> hallelujah, amen. <clears throat> but we have, we have to have an experiential. No, it has to be experiential. Let me give you a principle here in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 6. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him. Did you get that? All right. Uh, that is a principle of the kingdom. It is a principle uh, that, uh, it, well, that you have to observe. Uh, it would be as well rendered, this is the meaning of it if you do not know, uh, uh, to whatever extent you have received Christ, walk in it. To whatever extent you have received Christ, walk in that. You have to walk in that so you can, uh, so that you can receive some more to walk in. And then you walk in that, you will receive more to walk in. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Yeah, we got people all over the country uh, that is. Uh, um, uh, sounding out loud and clear uh, and vocal uh, that they are being led by the Spirit. But there's something wrong because uh, uh, a great majority of them is walking in direct uh, opposition to the Word of God. 
and contrary to the word of God. They have not submitted to ministry. Right. And if they are ministry, they have not uh, submitted to other ministry, and they have not uh, took the, uh, the obligations. Somebody said, well, I don't want not, you know, a lot of people uh, wants to be just a free, uh, kind of a lone ranger status. Uh, they have been tabbed. Uh, and some people uh, say they don't want, they don't, well, the Bible says don't let your right hand know what the left hand's doing. Well, I found down for them people that don't want the left hand know what the right hand doing, because either hand ain't doing nothing, you know? <laughs> Amen. Ah, praise the Lord. You know how to tell the difference in a, in a sheep and a, and a wolf when the wolf's got on the sheep's clothing? I'm going to tell you. You look at his tracks. <laughs> yeah. Look at his tracks. Now, so I invite you to look at my tracks. <laughs> yeah. Well, somebody said, well, the Lord made of himself no reputation. Well, that means that he didn't come just to make a reputation. Uh, that he certainly did make a reputation, <laughs> whether he made it of himself or not. He had quite a reputation, didn't he? And, uh, and you better kind of these, uh, you better kind of safeguard yours. And I'll say, uh, you know, because if you, if you don't, you lose your influence. Right. And, uh, and uh, you, so, so uh, all I say is, just look at my tracks. Uh, <laughs> hallelujah. Amen. And see that I have one motive for preaching this message. I've been preserved and called unto this day and, and to, uh, to this message. I, I have, uh, I, I feel an urgency too. I, I can't, I can't quit. I can't. I uh, uh, sometimes I think I'd like to stay at home about a week. Uh, of course, I'm faster, you know. But I don't hit the road and get out, you know, for a couple of weeks, and I start pacing the floor. And my wife says I'm like a big old bear. Uh, well, uh, but it's an urgency that I feel Amen. that this message of the kingdom has to be preached in all the world as a witness. Of him, and then the end will come, the end of this age, and the sons of God will be manifested, translated. There are many uh, oh, doctrines, uh, so we will talk about that some more later, maybe if we get a chance. Let's get back here on our subject. All right, when he ascended up on high, we said that Paul is referring to to. Uh, uh, he's speaking of the most important event that ever took place. He refers to a statement in the Psalms, uh, and that is in the 68th Psalm. You might want to hold your finger here. We'll be back here and turn to the 68th Psalm. And while you're turning over to the 68th Psalm, I'm going to turn to St. Luke and just read. Don't turn with me here. Just going back to the 68th chapter of uh, uh, of Psalms, I'll turn to the last chapter and the last verse, 24th chapter of St. Luke uh, and the 44th verse, if you're making notes, uh, and if you're not, well, get the tape, because you will need to hear this more than once, because, uh, all right, uh, and uh, in the 44th verse, he said unto them, that is, Jesus said unto them, these are the words which I speak unto you while I was yet, which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Now, you see, he had to first, if it was uh, spoken of in the law of Moses, and if the prophets uh, prophesied uh, and confirmed it, and then uh, if the psalmist confirmed it again, it had to be fulfilled. Now, uh, you see, that's why that uh, there are so many false doctrines that are not basically sound because uh, a lot of doctrines are built on just one or two scriptures and uh, have been removed from their setting to do that. But now, uh, he could add to this that Jesus should have mentioned it in his ministry. And then the early apostles should have practiced it or pursued the practice of it. If you will take this five-fold uh, safeguard, 
you will walk in true doctrine. If it was spoken by Moses, prophesied by the prophets, spoken of in the Psalms, Jesus made uh, reference to it. The early apostles either practiced it or pursued the practice of it. Some of it they could not practice at one time, but they pursued it. They Paul pressed the Lord. And then you have a doctrine that you don't have to be afraid of. You don't have to be afraid of. These are the principles that will get you into the kingdom. It will get you in line for the uh, first resurrection. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right? We've turned back now. Have you turned back to Psalm 68? Um, let, all right, it begins like this. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. That's how the psalm begins. But in the, that's not uh, particularly what we were going for, but I believe that Brother, somebody spoke of the cloud, Brother Glenn, I guess. All right? Uh, you know, the Israelites followed the Lord by a cloud, pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. And uh, um, they, when the cloud moved, they moved. Now, the, 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 the 144,000 that comes to Mount Zion in the 14th chapter of Revelations, they, but I'm shortcutting, they followed the Lamb whithersoever he went. Not too interested in public opinion. Don't let public opinion mold your ministry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have to stand against public opinion a lot of times. It's good. I'm getting ahead of myself. But it's good. You see that? You know what that is? That's flag. Yeah, I am a patriot. <laughs> Amen. But it, and and I love this nation. Now I I say again, you can observe my tracks. But if and I think that we have the best governmental system in the world. Well, that's my thinking on it. But if I let this civilization of ours mold my thinking and mold my walk, I'll miss God a million miles. Hallelujah. I support our form of government, but I'm just saying that that's all it is. It's a form of natural government, human government, full of error, human error. And if I let them mold my ministry, or mold my walk, mold my thinking. I'll miss God a million miles. The kingdom of God is so far above that as the heavens uh, is the earth. And my, oh, blessed be God. All right, in the 18th uh, the verse then of the 68th chapter, he says here, that, well, let's, let's read the... Uh, the six, let's read from the 16th verse. 18th is the one we want, but we'll get some little background here. He says, Why leap ye, ye high hills? This is the hill which God decides to dwell in. Yea, the Lord will dwell in it forever. Hallelujah. He's talking about Zion. The chariots of, the, of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them as in Sinai in the holy place. Thou hast ascended on high. Here it is. The, uh, you've got your fingers still back over in Ephesians 4 and 8? Uh, don't let me run you out of fingers here. Hallelujah. All right. You have ascended on high. Thou hast led captivity captive. Thou hast received gifts for men. Yea, for the rebellious also, that the Lord God might dwell among them. Blessed be the Lord, even the God of our salvation. All right, now, uh, in the 18th verse, he has, he has ascended on high. Uh, the psalmist says, he has received gifts for men. Uh, all right, but in the in chapter four of Ephesians and verse eight, he has given, he gave gifts to men. But here he received gifts for men. His plan has never changed. He had received gifts from men. He led captivity captive, just like he did over there. All right? Now, do you know what he is in reference to? The psalmist has to be in reference to something. He's talking about what God has done. He is in reference to First uh, Chronicles chapter 15. 
First Chronicles chapter 15, when David brings the ark up to Zion. The ark of God was the, uh, was the presence of God. Somebody said, well, a symbol of God's presence. Well, it was that, but it was, it was God. It was His presence among humanity. It was the way, uh, it was where He would meet uh, with those that were holy. Uh, it was His presence. And when His presence came in, the 68th chapter began, then His enemies get scattered. The Israelites would watch that old, uh, that cloud, and when they slept at night, they had watchers on the wall. And there's watchers on the wall uh, now uh, in the kingdom of God. Uh, and they were watching for one thing. Uh, they were keeping their eyes on that cloud. And if that cloud began to move by night, uh, they, 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 they would go alarm, wake up the trumpeters. Yes. And uh, uh, the watchman uh, would give the signal, pass the word, to wake up the trumpeters and have them to set them to sound the trumpet. Uh, and uh, at midnight or three o'clock in the morning, uh, the trumpeters would raise those trumpets to their mouth uh, and begin to sound, God is rising! Hallelujah! Said, be God, and and, uh, and the father in the tent, uh, as he raised up, he kicked the tent pole out from under the thing. Hallelujah! Amen. Uh, it meant uh, that they were moving closer to their destination, to a land that flowed with milk and honey. Hallelujah! Paul makes a beautiful reference to it in the fifth chapter of Second Corinthians, and at this house. Be dissolved. We have another one. Hallelujah. And then, ah, uh, and the next one is not built by man, but it is in the heavens. It is not earthly. This one is earthly. But I have one that's in the heavens. I'm waiting to rip the redemption of my body. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the last thing that will submit uh, to the inworkings of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Let God arise. Ah, Paul said, we have an house not, uh, not earthly, it's in the heavens. And it's not this one like this one, this one's temple. This one was meant to be taken down, but that one is permanent. Hallelujah. So if I don't walk into life with 144,000, and I miss the earth, uh, 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 and I miss the harvest, the only way I calculate that I'm going to do that is that if I shed this tabernacle before, if there's a time element here that keeps me from moving into the fullness, I'll touch that some more. I'll shed this tabernacle, but but when they but I but don't let that confuse you. Don't let it worry you a minute, because when they began to tear down the tents, they, they, the the Levites began to tear down the tabernacle. The bugles of Zion were moving toward our destination. Uh, and so the priest uh, that was in charge of the ark grabbed up the covering for the ark. And they proceed uh, to the location of the ark. And when they get there, they turn, as Brother did last night, uh, to cover the nakedness of, of Noah. They turn uh, with the canvas over their shoulders back up to the ark, because no man can see God and live. And they throw the covering over the ark. Then they wrap it and secure it. And it is secure until the tabernacle is raised again. I don't know if you got that or not. <laughs> I don't know if you... I don't know. Hear me by the spirit. 
That signifies to me that if I shed this tabernacle, uh, that me, the real me, the ark, hallelujah, deep, uh, uh, whereby that in that covering it is well able to subsist until this tabernacle is raised again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And let let it be stated emphatically that he who created it in the first place can of an assurance recreate it in the last. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Only the next time it will be fashioned like unto his glorious body. Hallelujah. If I could have my preference, I'd rather that, that would happen in the twinkling of an eye. But if, hallelujah. But if it doesn't, I, I can still get in the first resurrection. Hallelujah. And still reign with Him if my heart is right. Oh, so that when they ascended up on high, He led, uh, so He, I said that He is in reference to David bringing up the ark. He took it up to Zion. He brings it up to Zion. And the son ascended it up on high. When he ascended up on high. Ah, yes. And when he ascended up on high, he returned the governmental order, the authority, and the power to execute that authority to Israel. Because that authority, the ark had been in the hands of the enemies of God, as you remember. And only for the last few months it has been uh, kind of in a neutral between. But for a long time it was captured by the enemy. Now when David <coughs> moves the ark up to Zion, the highest place where the law shall go forth from Zion, he'll stretch forth his hand from Jerusalem. Uh, when he moved the ark to Zion, he was well in control. That meant that the governmental authority had returned to, to Israel. I said that to say that we are the spiritual Israel. And when he ascended up on high, he gave gifts to men. And the gifts that he gave to men was when he ascended up Mount Zion, and the psalmist is making reference to it, he restored the governmental order to them, to Israel. The authority and the power to execute that authority. I declare unto you that when Paul says he gave the gifts unto men uh, in Ephesians, he restored governmental authority to the church and to the fivefold ministry and gives them the authority and the power to execute that authority. Hallelujah. And until we come into this, until, brother said, until, it's a time word. It is a time word that is governed by whatever statement follows it. By itself, it's nothing. <laughs> I think there's anything, I believe, is more correct, uh, until you relate it to something else. Uh, well, you see, so, so until uh, is a time word that is governed by the next statement. Until. We're here until... Until I get through teaching <laughs> this morning. Until, we're here until, it's governed by the next statement. Until I get through preaching, teaching, whatever I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, you see. Uh, until, all right. Now, so then, he, he says that when he, when, you, when he ascended up on high, we said, all right, now you remember that David had attempted to bring the ark up before. You, you're familiar Bible scholars, I hope. You know he tried to bring it up before, but he tried to bring it up on a new cart. The, the Philistines transported it that way. But then God, they don't know God. So God just kind of took the thing over. And let them do what they do, and then God did what he was. God was going home. Yeah. Oh, he was going back to the camp of Israel, and whatever means that they uh, concocted to uh, convey him, he would just take advantage of that. You know, they hooked these two uh, cows that didn't have any, uh, they had calves. They locked the calves up and hooked the cows to the ark and just turned them foot loose and just took for whichever way they go. 
if they go toward the camp of the Israelites, that means that we're in trouble. <laughs> this is the end of part A. Please play part B. Thank you. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you. For tapes of end-time meetings, deliverance services, or Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, writes Post Office Box 21516, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas, zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. This is now the conclusion of this message from Part A. Of the Friday morning service of September the 4th, 1987, Jack Harris is a speaker. I go toward the camp of the Israelites. That means that we're in trouble. <laughs> uh, and if they don't, it means that everything that happened to us here, all these flags and everything was just coincidental. And they took every advantage of the situation to make it look coincidental. It's kind of like I, like I put out a fleece one time. I told, well, it was kind of just kind of a little thing. I told my wife, there we, uh, yeah, I went by the uh, automobile place, and this long about oh, back in the seventies. And it was first year they cut the Cadillac down from the big one to the, you know, a smaller one. And they had a red and white one out there. And I thought, well, that's the prettiest car I've ever seen. I believe I'll just stop and talk to the fellow about it. It's on Saturday evening. It's about closing time. And so I pulled in there, and, and I knew him. He knew me. And I said, well, that's a pretty car. He said, yes, I got that for you, you know, because car salesman called. And I said, well, you couldn't have picked one I like better. When can I pick it up? He said, uh, can't let you have it now because got to put it on show in about, you know, it wasn't time for him to be uncovered yet for about 15 days. But after that, you, we go trade. Uh, we'd trade now, but, and I said, ah, well, you know, if I buy a car, I drive it. And, you know, I'll drive. and he said, I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. He said, if you want this car to come Monday, this was Saturday evening, and, uh, and I'll uh, I'll sell it to you, and you can uh, br if you will bring it back on the the day that they're supposed to show them and let me have it for the showcase. So I, I said, well, if we a deal, I'll do that. So my wife, she's you know I she said, well, what are you going to do? I, uh, she wasn't with me when I was making the deal. I came on and told her about it, and I said, uh, so she said, uh, well, are you going to buy that car? And I said, I don't know. I got a fleece out. I said. Uh, he locked the door when we left. I mean, on Saturday evening and Sunday, they're not open, you know. And she said, "Well, what kind of fleece you put?" I said, "Well, if it's still there on Monday morning when he opens." <laughs> well, <laughs> that, that 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 was taking a little bit of advantage, uh, <laughs> say the least. Well, that's what the Philistines done. They took a little advantage uh, to make it look like that. Uh, that God had not, you know, put all these flags on them. They're going to make it look coincidental. So they they know a cow is going to come to that calf when he blights. Huh? I was raised on farm ranch uh, kind of thing. And and when that calf, when that calf blights, that old cow will just come to him. But And these cows were not broke to the yoke. They never had been hooked to nothing. And that will get things tore up, well, I'm telling you. But they hook them to that ark, <laughs> to that card on that ark, and and them old cows. The Bible says they went down the road lowing as they went. That lowing is a pitiful, mournful sound. They're wanting them babies. Everything that was cow was telling that old cow to turn around and go back, and that cow really was wanting to turn around and go back to where that calf was blatant. But it was that box back there. Something in that box. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There, there was something on that cart. 
uh, uh, that were superseding all nature. Hallelujah. Superseded all the nature of that old cow and made her go contrary, just as contrary to her nature as, as, as backward is from forward. Hallelujah. Amen. And they went straight into the... It was, it was in the time of harvest, too, if you'll remember, that they came straight into the camp of the Israelites. And, oh, there was a rejoicing. Something in that box back there just kept them going. That's what I, I... I think I have felt the same thing. There's something that just keeps me going. There's something that just keeps motivating me. Something that, oh my, that just will make me go against, you know, when I'm tired, <laughs> hallelujah, doesn't make any difference. So I, I still feel that urgency to go. It's, it's that ark, hallelujah. And when you ascended up on high, he received. <laughs> now here's, now let me get into the beauty part here. Underline the word he received in the 18th chapter of the uh, of this, in the 18th verse, of the, where are we, in the 18th, yeah, oh, yeah, okay, well, we're, yeah, okay, we're, we'll turn, we're in Psalm 68, okay, so in the 18th verse, uh, we'll underline the word received, he received gifts, now, he received gifts for men when he ascended up on high. Now, you see, uh, when the psalmist is in reference to bringing God to Zion, God ascended up on high in Zion, he received gifts for men. We said he received the governmental order and the authority uh, for Israel. And also, uh, in about the uh, 23rd verse, maybe, well, I'm not sure, I've already turned away from there, I believe, but he, gives, he deals to every man a loaf of bread and a piece of meat, and uh, some wine, women and men alike. You, you see that? That's All right, now, God received gifts for men because, see, God doesn't need anything. I mean, how can God, how can God receive a gift? I uh, accept that He receive a gift for men. God doesn't need anything that we have. He doesn't need anything from us. Ah, but he will receive from us, but you know what he does with it? He receives it for men, because it has pleased God that he will express himself to, the, to hum humanity. That's how that he will express himself. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among men. We beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace truth. Hallelujah. All right, the word received uh, in, the, um, uh, in the Hebrew is, is spelled, I'll spell it for you, L-A-K-A-H. And it means, it means to take hold of the word receive in the Hebrew. In the original here, it means to take hold of, to seize, you understand, to seize, to take hold of. It means to to take by depriving another. Now, I don't know if you got that or not. <laughs> oh, look. It means <coughs> to lay hold of, to seize upon, to take by depriving another. Well, now you'll get it. The enemy, the, the Bible says that the... That that the devil is the prince of the powers of the air. He rules in, in the powers and principalities. He is called the God of this world. And everywhere he is spoken of uh, as being the God of this world, he has a place uh, in the upper stratosphere where he rules uh, over powers and principalities. Uh, and so, uh, God uh, gives to the church the fivefold ministry, the gift that He gives back to the church, uh, is the authority uh, that we'll take hold of 
that will seize upon and deprive another, we will control principalities and powers. Hallelujah. We will control the universe. You see, as you read the, the, the Old Testament, especially in the prophecies of Isaiah and Ezekiel, and uh, well, all of them, Daniel. Daniel uh, speaks of the uh, government of the kingdom very much. And, uh, but some of, their, some, of their, some of those prophecies are fulfillment over into the kingdom age. They'll belong to this age, to the church age. They belong to the kingdom age. Uh, and uh, that's why that I said the apostles must have walked in it or pursued it. <laughs> we must either walk in it or pursue. We're walking. Well, what we're doing now is I, I'd just be uh, honest with you to tell you that we are manifesting in part. We're in the parts realm. But when that which is perfect is calm, the parts realm will be, the King James says, done away with. Actually, it will be superseded. The parts will be enveloped in the in the hole so uh, uh, it's not uh, you know it's not that we're just throwing something away don't, don't throw nothing away just keep it and build on it praise the Lord just make sure it's on a good foundation all right you see we said that David before had tried to move trying, tried to transport the ark like the Philistines but the God uh, made a breach on them. You remember Uzziah reaches forth his hand, stricken dead. The Bible said that David was afraid of God that day. And then David did a beautiful thing. He inquired of the Lord in the 15th verse of the uh, of the First Chronicles 15. We don't need to turn back over there, I don't guess. He inquired of the Lord. And uh, all right, now here's where he was at. David attempted to do something. He knew that the ark was supposed to come to Zion and that this would be God's dwelling place, he, he attempted to do it, and it didn't work. So when it didn't work, he didn't say, oh, well, win some, lose some. <laughs> yeah. He inquired of the Lord. He wanted to find out why it didn't work. Uh -huh. If it's supposed to work and it doesn't work, something malfunctioned. Yeah. Uh, something caused that malfunction. That's what he's looking for. Uh, the Bible says, if there's any sick among you, call for the elders' church. They anoint him with oil, lay hands on him, prayer of faith, save sick, Lord raise him up. If that doesn't work, there's something wrong. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. Is that right? Is that, has that been your experience? Well, when it don't, there's something wrong. When any statement that the Lord makes for us that is supposed to be for us, if it doesn't work, we do the mechanics of it, like you said, and if it doesn't work, something is wrong. It is commendable of David that he sought out uh, what was wrong. Well, why don't we do that? Okay, I'll, I'll ask the question and give the answers. <laughs> Amen. Why don't we do that? The reason is because we already know what's wrong <laughs> when it doesn't work. We already know what's wrong, and we're not willing to make the, uh, the proper adjustments. Uh, did you get that one? <laughs> is that right? We already know what's wrong, and we're simply not willing to make the proper adjustments. So we just uh, develop the attitude to win some, lose some and go ahead and God's gracious to us and let's just win a few more. <laughs> Amen. But he won't continue to do that. It will not continue that way. And if it continues that way, you'll always be in this parts realm. Uh, I, would, I, I don't want to spend eternity right here on this plateau, do you? No, I don't want to spend eternity here. Hallelujah. Ah, every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. Hallelujah. I want to appear before Him. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, you, uh, all right, so you take, all right, then, now, what Jesus, now, let, now we'll get back to, uh, we'll go back to our text in Ephesians chapter 4, when He ascended up on high, 
He led captivity captive. All right, Jesus died on Calvary. And when he was crucified in the 27th chapter of the book of St. Matthew, verse began with verse 51, many of the graves burst open at the crucifixion. But, but they remained, those that their graves burst open remained in the grave. They did not, they were not resurrected, not at that time. But the graves burst open when Jesus was crucified. And there was a great uh, earthquake or whatever transpired there. God uh, pulled the curtain of darkness down upon the cross. For he would not allow the carnal mind of an eye of man to behold uh, the spiritual thing that God was doing. But I declare unto you that while uh, the earth was covered in darkness, God got every ordinance that was against us. And, there, uh, and nailed them to the cross under the shadow of darkness. Uh, and when Jesus died... Uh, so did the ordinances that were contrary to us. Now, those that were not contrary to us, he, uh, we have retained them, such as baptism in water, not contrary. Communion, not contrary, uh, you know. But, but as far as going through all these ceremonial, legalistic ceremonial, these were the ones that he nailed to the cross. Then they buried Jesus. Uh, and they had his body fastened up in this tomb. But he, in that three days, this was the only sign that he would give to that generation, that as Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days and nights, so must the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth. So when, he was, when his body was in that tomb, he descended. For what is it? He that ascended first descended. He descended into the heart of the earth. I declare unto you that that was the day that he moved paradise. Hallelujah. For whatever paradise consists of, how our God moved it. Hallelujah. Where did he move it? He moved it from down here somewhere into the upper stratosphere somewhere. Well, that Russian astronaut said, there ain't, I knew there was no God. He went... How many hundred thousands of miles up there and said, I didn't see him? I'll tell you one thing. He may not have seen God, but God seen him. Hallelujah. Amen. And if something had went wrong with his rocket, he would have seen him. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Ah, so Jesus descended into the lower parts of the earth. He, uh, in uh, First Peter, is it First Peter here? We'll turn over there and read. He ascended. Uh, uh, it's in Second Peter, I guess. No, it, no, it's in the First Peter, chapter 3, verse 18, 19. Verse 18, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Well, then you could read the whole thing, but that's, uh, we're, we're, just, we're pressed for time here. He goes into paradise, and when he goes into paradise, the, you know the Bible speaks of in uh, uh, Hebrews, uh, those that could not be made, these all having died in faith, could not be made perfect, Without us. But, all right, they, they died. The Apostle Paul, hear him cry, I'm an apostle born out of due season. They died not having received the promise, but they received a credit voucher. Hallelujah. You know what a credit voucher is? Oh, <laughs> well, uh, let me tell you then. Uh, uh, in the, back in the 30s, uh, in the county that I live in, the school district that I live in, the school district went broke with the rest of us. And, uh, and they couldn't pay the teachers, couldn't pay the bus drivers. And uh, they, uh, they, I don't know what a teacher made, $75 a month, I think, maybe about like that. Uh, and the uh, bus driver made 50 So the school made a deal with the teachers 
They couldn't find no other job, no hell, and they couldn't do nothing else. I mean, you know, nothing. Uh, we'll pay you $25 a month now and give you a credit voucher for $50 a month. To the bus drivers, we'll give you uh, $15 cash and a credit voucher of $35 a month. Now, and they, as far as I know, all of them did that. And it was, oh, it was four or five years getting all of that straightened out. But what that credit voucher was good for was that if the school district received any money and deposited it in the bank, you could take your credit voucher and pull out that amount. So those that died in faith, not having received the promise, because they couldn't be made perfect without us, was, was, uh, was living righteously against time element, they received a credit voucher. And, uh, and they were holding on to these credit vouchers. And they were down there somewhere, and everything was going on up here. But they were in paradise and having a great time in the presence of each other. And the Spirit of the Lord uh, was present with them, and, and it was indeed paradise. Uh, and, uh, and, and, uh, but they were, every once in a while, uh, another one would come to paradise. And they'd say, well, what's happening up there? Mm. Uh. And, uh, and, uh, they'd, uh, say, well, the prophets are prophesying great things. They're prophesying a deliverance. They, they, they've even prophesied uh, that we'll be taken out of here and, uh, and moved to a, a better, uh, to another wealthier place. And then one day this feller came hurtling through down there in paradise. His name was Lazarus. <laughs> and they said, where are you from? He said, Bethany. They said, what's going on? He said, Jesus, the Messiah, he's up there. Oh, I ain't joking, will you? Had supper with him two weeks ago. And then, yeah, he's up there. He's doing all kinds of miracles. Everything is happening. I'll tell you, fellas, it's close. Then, then in about four days, Lazarus just disappeared. From paradise. Because <laughs> Jesus came to Bethany and he came to the graveside of Lazarus and said to him to come forth. And he couldn't do nothing but come forth. And everybody was astonished. The, and, uh, you know, of course, he then, uh, everybody, you know, this man's been dead four days. Everybody knew that but Lazarus. But Lazarus didn't know that. Because, you see, you know, the, when the, Daniel talks about the when, when Nebuchadnezzar reigned in one realm, he didn't remember the other realm. He had no memory of the other realm. If we came out from the bosom of God, I have no re recollection of that. You, you understand? All right. If, all right. So, Lazarus uh, comes forth and... Uh, Everybody's astonished because they know he's been dead four days, but he don't know he's been dead four days. See, but when he went to sleep, his sisters told him, said, we've sent a messenger to get Jesus. And Jesus on his way on a little trip out here, and we've sent some fellas to get him. He'll be back. You take a nap, and when you wake up, Jesus will be here, and everything will be all right. So when he woke up, he naturally thought he had took a nap, like Martha said. <laughs> And that Jesus had retired. Well, Jesus comes in uh, when he is uh, in the tomb. He comes into the heart of the earth, and they begin to wave their credit vouchers. Their graves already bursted open up under three days ago. Hallelujah! They're just waving a credit voucher to get the redemption of their bodies. Then Jesus walks over to that great gulf that separates the uh, the damned from the righteous and declares to them that they have received their just reward. And then he begins his ascent back up through the heart of the earth, and he led captivity captive. 
He moved them from one place to another. And when they came out uh, uh, at the surface of the earth, hallelujah, there, uh, the, the, them, them graves that had burst open, the bodies came out. They were the bodies of those spirits. They had housed those spirits in their lifetime. Hallelujah. Uh, and the Lord himself shall descend with a shout. The voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, well, they, so the bodies began to rise and Jesus says to them, I, well, I imagine that he, they, he said to them, all right, fellas, Take a four-day leave. Meet me back in 40 days. So they went down into the cities and were seen by many. Is that Scripture? That's what happened. And then Jesus, by the space of 40 days, uh, uh, He proved Himself alive by many infallible proofs. And then when the 40 days was up, He gave His disciples, His followers, the commission orders to go to Jerusalem, tarry till you be endued uh, with power from on high. And when he had done that, he ascended up in a cloud. Well, it, maybe it was a rain cloud, but I'd rather think it was a cloud, this cloud of witnesses. Have you noticed, if you have been a long time walking with God and coming into his presence, you know, we're always in His presence, but there are times that we actually focus in His presence. That He is much more real. It is a much more real experience than it was 10 years ago. It was 15 years ago. I think the spirits of just men made perfect are hovering very close. Hallelujah. You know what they're hovering close for in the grandstand? They're waiting for one of us to grab up the ball and run over the goal. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And then they're going to cheer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They're waiting for us sons of God to walk into life. To come to Zion. To be separated from religious order, hallelujah, into the Melchizedek order yeah. of ministry, hallelujah. We cannot do this the way that we are going now <laughs> the, is not sufficient. If the translation should take place today, I believe that the translation will take place in the very, very near future. Uh, all all uh, spiritual scholars believe that something traumatic and dramatic will happen in the rest of this year and next year. It could very well be the consolation of the sons of God. The 144,000 will have come to Zion. And all oh, those that could not be made perfect without us. Hallelujah will rise in the grandstands. The first resurrection will take place. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. oh blessed be God forever. And, and at that time will be determined those that will reign with Him forever. It will be determined at the time. The, well, in the foreknowledge of God, it's already determined. But to all it will be determined that they will reign. All will not reign with him. Hallelujah. All will not come to him. Many will be lost because of their rebellious natures and spirits. On the day of Pentecost, the, the, in the second chapter of Acts in verse 40, uh, the, uh, they have posed a question to Peter, said, what shall we do? He said, repent and and uh, be baptized in the name of the Lord. And, and, and then he went on to say, and save yourself from this own two-word generation. Don't let the world catch you up in its mold. 
I already said if I follow the our civilization, follow the code of our civilization, let it direct my walk, my talk, my beliefs, I'll miss God a million miles. Hallelujah. I will not do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I will be one of those that will follow the Lamb wheresoever he goeth. Hallelujah. 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 There's too many miles behind us. Yes. Blessed be God. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. hallelujah. Ah, yes, Jesus. Ah, and so when Jesus descended then, he ascended up into the heavens. He took these with him, these witnesses. Jesus was seated at the right hand of the Father, and the witnesses were placed uh, in the uh, spectators, in the grandstands, uh, waiting and watching until somebody could do that thing that would finish their perfection and finish ours too. And when he ascended up on high, he gave gifts unto men. He gave back the governmental authority to the church. And this is where I see that we're kind of short now, is in the authority, in the governmental authority. Now, I say this without any hint at any legalistic. Nothing is legalistic. No, no legalistic codes here. Just the following of the Lord. But, but, but there is a proper way to follow the Lord. We must submit to leadership. And leadership must submit to other leadership. As a matter of fact, I must submit to the whole body of Christ. That's right. I submit to uh, the authority wherever I go. I will not submit to public opinion. The Lord God reigneth. Yes, he, does. he is clothed with majesty. He is clothed with strength, whereof he girdeth himself. The earth is established that it cannot be moved. Thy throne, O Lord, is established of old. The floods have lifted up. The floods have lifted up their voices. The floods have lifted up their waves. But the Lord God on high is mightier than the voices of many waters. That means he's mightier than public opinion. He is mightier than the waves of the sea. Thy testimonies are very sure in holiness. Become at thine house, O Lord, forever. Yes. Hallelujah. We will not... Uh, bow to public opinion. Hallelujah. Amen. We're not, uh, we're not, we're not entering into a popularity contest. Hallelujah. Amen. And brother said there's no, there's nothing competitive. That's right. We must develop, allow the principles of the kingdom to develop, be developed in us. And one of the first principles is that, the, uh, that among the sons there is no retaliation. I send you uh, among as la as lambs among wolves. Has a lamb has no there's no no way he can retaliate. He has no natural safeguards at all. None. Even a rabbit can run fast and dart for his, his natural uh, uh, safeguards. A lamb has nothing unless a shepherd keeps him safe. He has no security. These are some of the principles of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. We must bow very low, and yet we are to be exalted very high. Can we, can we make the transition? Many have not been able to make the transition. Many have went through the bowing low, but when the when they begin to get exalted, they begin to be exalted to a place of preeminence in the kingdom, they, they couldn't make that task. It may be the hardest of all tasks. It may be easier to be humble than it is to be great. Maybe. Hallelujah. But somewhere between the two. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God forever. Let me tell you an experience that I had that a scripture came very alive to me, and I'll close with this. In Proverbs chapter 30, no, chapter 18, I believe it's going to be. I may have to get oriented here. Chapter 18, and no, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, no, it's, I guess it is in chapter 30. My first guess is usually my best. Yeah, 18, verse 18, 19 is the one I really want here. 
Now, uh, you'll have to turn over to this to appreciate it and read with me. In verse 18, I'm in the 30th chapter of Proverbs. In verse 18, there be three things which are too wonderful for me, yea, four things, four which I know not. The way of an eagle in the air, the way of a serpent upon a rock, the way of a ship in the midst of the sea, and the way of a man with a maid. Some years ago, I was just calculating here, came across this scripture, you know, and wondered, well, what does this mean? And then I, I, I say, well, uh, an eagle in the air, what does an eagle in the air have to do with the serpent on a rock? And the serpent on a rock have to do with the way of a ship and the way of a maid with a man or a man with a maid? What, what is what is a common denominator? And then, of course, it is easy to discover the common denominator. The common denominator is that there's no trace left. Something happens, something has been here, and when it is gone, that left no trail. No. All right? If an eagle had just flown across this building here, and you walk out two minutes after he's flown across here, you can't tell that he ever flew across. He doesn't leave any trail. There's no sign that he came across here. A ship in the sea, if you come along five minutes after he's passed, of course, you know, if you see the ship, but if you see the ship, well, of course, you see the, you know, the disturbance of the water, but come through five minutes after a big streamliner has gone through, and there's no sign that a ship ever sailed through here. Then uh, uh, he says, a man with a maid, uh, you just use your own interpretation there, but very obvious, uh, isn't it? No sign, uh, you know. And, and then a serpent on a rock. All right? Now this was, uh, uh, became, there are some scriptures that the Lord has just really uh, dramatized for me and just really brought them alive uh, through natural, uh, my natural senses and resources. This was one scripture. I was down in the pasture cleaning out some springs one day, day hot as the weather we've been having now. What we had there on the uh, farm was running water springs that bored up out of the ground, and they formed a, a little creek or branch. And that's where the cattle watered. But a lot of sand came up through the white sand. And the holes that you dig out for the cattle to drink would fill up with sand. And I was cleaning, dipping the sand out. You could take a foot tub and dip it out, you know. And uh, just make the water deep enough that he could, the horse could lower his nose in it a little bit to take a drink. And... Uh, and it was, uh, in this particular place, the water run out from under some uh, maple trees and the sweet gum trees. And there was a big flat rock, sand rock, brown in color. And it was flat like this uh, stand here. And it was big. It was, it was as big as from here, the rest of this back this way. And water run out from under it and made a wide place there. And it was sand and... On the other side was sagebrush. I sat there and leaned back against a tree and kind of resting, you know, taking it easy. And, and I heard a rustling over there in the sagebrush. And I knew that something was in that sagebrush. Maybe a rabbit. Might be a frog. No, it might be anything small, you know. So I look. And back as far as near the wall, in the sagebrush, I seen the top of that sagebrush wiggling like that. And it was coming closer toward me. And pretty soon, a big old moccasin snake crawled out of that sage grass. And I'd seen him come all the way across there. And he, is, and he crawled out across that sand, that old white sand. And when he crawled out across there, he, oh, he was that big around, five foot long, I guess. And he, uh, he, he, he buried up his belly about a third of the way in that sand and left a distinct track 
right across that branch where he come. And he come right straight toward me. I'm on, I'm on this rock. And uh, and when he gets to that rock, I wonder, well, I just know I'm just sitting there amazed, wondering what he's going to do. And, you know, after all, I have the intention to get up and, and you know, getting rid of him. But uh, if he gets to the rock and he hoists his head right out of that water, sand, sage grass, he hoists his head up on that rock. And he began to slither up on that rock. And he, uh, pretty soon he slithered up there and he's got his full length on that old brown sandstone rock. And then I, I noticed something. That when he came up on that rock, though he'd just come out of that water, you'd think that his body was wet and now he would leave a wet trail on that rock. But there wasn't one drop of water on that rock. As far as I could determine, he didn't leave one particle of sand on that rock. So I just sat there amazed. And, and he crawled off all the way across the rock, slithered off the other side, and went out of sight. And as I, as I sat there contemplating, I thought about the Scripture. <clears throat> and I seem to hear echoing off the walls of time through the rustling of the sweet gum and maple tree. Ah, there's a serpent on a rock. There's a needle in the air. There's a ship in the sea. There's a man with a maid. And the Lord spoke to me and said, Son, you've seen it. You notice that serpent crawled through that glass? You see him coming, and you can go look now, and you'll see a trail where he came through it. I eased, and I seen a trail about that wide. You seen such trails? <laughs> yeah, he had made. It. And then I looked, and he said, "You see in that sand there, he left a trail." But when he came to that rock, his body is so fashioned that nothing clings to it that he will leave on that rock. And he said, he said. The serpent met Adam in the Garden of Eden, and Adam was the first Adam in the Garden of Eden, and Adam was a man of the earth. And they had a confrontation, and the serpent marred Adam's character for all generations to come in just one conference. He left his track indelibly embedded on the Adamic race. But then he said there was that second Adam, that last Adam, the last Adam. And when he had a confrontation with the last Adam, because the last Adam was a rock, and Paul said that rock followed them throughout the wilderness, when he had a confrontation with that last rock, unlike the first Adam, when he marred all of his descendants forever and left an indelible mark of his presence when he hit that last Adam, and though he went all the way across, the confrontation was over, he had not marred his character in one place. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus ascended... He, he went through death, hell, and the grave and ascended up on high. And when he got there, there was not one trace of evidence that he had ever been confronted by the serpent. Hallelujah. I do not hesitate to say unto you that this will be the ministry of the elect during the kingdom age. Hallelujah. Hallelujah that we will begin to eradicate the influence of, of Satan, who has been bound for a thousand years at that time. And when we get to the end of the age, we will all oh, blessed be God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> for those that would dwell in that new heaven and new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness, every trace of any evidence that was ever left behind by him will be eliminated forever. Hallelujah. <clears throat> That's to, in that place 
the new heaven and the new earth. There is another place, of course, that the damned will be occupying. But we that, we that wait for the new heaven and the new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness, shall enter therein. I'd like to do some more teaching on that, but I guess time has overtook us here. Praise the Lord. But, but that's what we'll be doing. It's a radical. You see, once the translation of the sons of God takes place, we're getting the long end of the stick. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sometime we've had short end. We, we're getting the long end of the stick, and we're not going to give it up until we take the whole stick. Hallelujah. Away from the enemy. And we'll secure those that will come to him. Anybody that won't come to him will never be secure. Right. Never. Never, never. But for those that will come, hallelujah. Ah, oh, yes. Then we will move into, you see, somebody says, well, when does the wedding, t- oh, it'll take place somewhere along in here. I'd like to teach on that some more, too, you know, because uh, people that uh, embrace a theory of the rapture, you know, the rapture, you uh, you familiar with the rapture theory, I guess? Uh, if you embrace the rapture theory, you have to embrace the bride theory as the elite. As the elite, elite. And you've got to get a wedding uh, gone before there's a groom ready. Uh, but if you embrace sonship and the translation instead of a rapture, a translation of the elect, then you can put everything in proper perspective uh, in the, 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 the book book talks about. The wedding takes place. See, I used to preach. Uh, I, I had uh, uh, ministry in the, uh, I told you it came up through the old order, and I had evangelistic type ministry. We preached for decision. You understand what I mean? And oh, what a, uh, it was beautiful. And a lot of people, uh, I let, I've got a lot of people to repent back in those days. Uh, this type ministry, you know, I moved in that for some years. Uh, and uh, um, that's that's a great ministry, but but we uh, we believed I, I I embraced the rapture as a authentic at that time, but if you do embrace it, there's too many other things that you are by virtue of embracing that embracing that cannot happen. Embrace. A trans- look for a translation of sons, because I just quoted it to you from the eighth chapter of Romans this morning. That whole creation grown it, travaileth in pain together until now, you know, and we're waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. That's what we're waiting for. We're, uh, uh, see, if you follow the rapture theory, the rapture theory as I knew it was that everybody is saved suddenly is going to be taken out, and, uh, and so it gives the people a false hope, and it's a false concept. Because I know people that are waiting for the rapture and expecting the Lord to catch them all out any minute, and the buzzard wouldn't help them. Hello? <laughs> well, well <laughs> I mean, but whatever you're doing, now is the time to get ready for it. Whatever your concept is, you have to get ready. If the rapture theory by chance were correct, you'd still have to make preparations to get in it. Hallelujah. And if the sonship message of the translation of the sons, if that is the event that they've seen and didn't understand, if it is correct, and I believe it is, if it is correct, you have to get ready or you're not going to be translated. Hallelujah. So whatever it is, you have to get ready. And the way to get ready uh, is to line up with God's Word. Hallelujah. There is no other way. Amen. There is no other way. No, no, that's it. That's it. Praise the Lord. There is no other way. Praise the Lord. Would you stand with me? <clears throat> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God, Jesus. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, this morning I pray for this people. My Lord, I invoke the choice blessings, choicest blessings from heaven for them this day. I invoke choice blessings upon this camp for the remainder of this uh, whole convention, Lord, this, this time of coming together. I invoke blessings that uh, rest, Lord, and even the prophetic word has gone forth, uh, Lord, that you look over uh, this camp. And this acreage, Lord, and your presence is always here, Lord. I, I witness to that. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, I pray that this word uh, that we have given this morning will be sealed in our hearts. Seal only that that will be profitable to the kingdom and to our walk toward the kingdom, O oh Lord. If I have said anything in folly, anything uh, that is not profitable to the kingdom, I pray that you'd cause this people to forget it before they can get out of the tabernacle this morning. Yes. But for all of that that will be profitable to us in our pursuit to the kingdom and to sonship and to submission, Father, I pray that you'd seal it to our spirits yes. forever. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Yes, in His precious name, we pray this day, my Lord and our God, uh, my Lord and our God, oh yes, and the Lord would say unto thee, yea, that of a truth you are a blessed people, yea, you have been privileged this day, yea, uh, to sit in the presence of His kind of glory, yea, you've sang and you have rejoiced. And that is good with me, saith the Lord. It is good for you. It is good in your, uh, for your uh, pursuit uh, toward the kingdom, toward sonship, toward submission. Yea, know that I have called many. I will choose a few out of that many. Yea, and they will be found faithful in my kingdom, saith the Lord, thou God. The Lord would say unto thee that thou must strive to enter in to the straight gate and the narrow gate, for many will try and will not be able. Only a few, saith the Lord. I speak not of being saved or lost in this, uh, in this moment, saith the Lord, but I am speaking of attaining unto the high calling in God. This is the narrowness of the gate. Yea, for many shall just follow traditional religious order. Yea, and shall not be able to enter in to the straight gate. But there be those that will follow the Lamb wheresoever he goeth. These will be the ones, yea, that will enter in. Yea, they are the ones uh, that will rule and reign throughout the ages, saith the Lord. Yea, of the increase of my government and peace, there will come no end. If I have chosen thee at this time, yea, if thou hast been found faithful at that time, thou shalt enter into a rule with me. Yea, for thou shalt rule uh, as a kingdom of priests throughout the uh, ages upon ages, saith the Lord thou God. Thou shalt be near me, and I shall overshadow thee. Yea, for we shall be indeed, we shall be one, saith the Lord thou God. Yea, we shall have one aim and one purpose. We shall be one uh, in the truest sense of oneness, saith the Lord thou God. Yea, pay close attention uh, to that that you have heard this day, that that you heard last night, and that that you will hear throughout the remaining of this camp. And be participators, saith the Lord, thou God. Yea, enter in and worship the Lord. Yea, uh, and, and for the hard sayings, uh, if there be hard sayings for thee, do not rebel against God. Yea, but take them under consideration. Yea, remember them. I shall call them to your remembrance again. I shall enlarge your understanding. Yea, and some of the things uh, that you have thought uh, were not so. Thou shalt know of the truth that it is true. Yea, some of the things that thou would refuse to embrace. Yea, thou will come a time that you'd be willing uh, to stake your life and to give and dedicate your very life to that cause, saith the Lord. For I shall move and no man can hinder. There is not a, a crevice of darkness in the universe uh, that I cannot scan uh, with mine eye, saith the Lord. Yea, there is not the furthest reach of any peninsula in the universe that I cannot reach, saith the Lord. Yea, there is nothing that shall be too hard for your God. Yea, uh, even the faintest cry from the furthest crevices of the darkness of this universe I can hear saith the Lord, Yea, I shall incline mine ear unto thee. I shall pay close attention unto thee. I shall cause enlargement to come unto thee. 
Yea, thou shalt, I shall cleanse thee from all unrighteousness. I shall cleanse thee from every uh, stain of guilt, saith the Lord thou God. I shall set the oppressed free. I shall bring deliverance in your midst. Yea, and it shall become a true living reality with you, because the Lord thou God shall move among you in a supernatural way. His Shekinah glory shall overshadow thee. Yea, and you shall find that you are being cleansed just by being in His presence, saith the Lord thou God. Yea, therefore I say unto thee that thou must minister one to another. Yea, thou must adhere to order, divine order. Yea, and seek out the government of God. And know that I have placed in the church uh, a fivefold ministry. Yea, that shall help thee all the way. Yea, that shall bring thee finally to a place of perfection, to the statue of the fullness of the Christ saith the Lord thou God. Only be obedient, and you shall eat of the good of the spiritual land, say God. Ah, for you are my people, and are of my calling. I have brought thee forth from many directions and many locations. You have come from many walks of life. You have come. Yea, and I shall minister to you uh, in this season of time, saith the Lord. Yea, and when that time comes uh, that you are to arise to a fullness, you will find that he who began a good work in you was able indeed to perform it unto the day uh, that it was necessary that it be manifested, saith the Lord. For I am God, and I change not. Yea, saith the Lord, Oh, know that I rule over the universe. Yea, uh, it would seem to some uh, that it is out of control. But I say unto you, Yea, that all things are in, uh, in order as I, uh, as I bring time upon time, saith the Lord. Yea, I know all things. And nothing uh, is done under cover as far as I am concerned, saith the Lord. In me you can have an option uh, that you too can know all things, saith the Lord, thou God. Yea, seek after this option. Seek after this knowledge. Yea, tune in uh, to the knowledge of the Almighty. Yea, and let wisdom find its way through your spirit, saith the Lord. And you shall live, and it shall be an abundance of life that you live, saith God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord, Brother Lamb. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.